Hey guys, JD here with the Yamaha FX SVHO. And in my last video, I installed the Reva Racing Power Filter Cold Air Intake. Today, I'm going to be installing the Reva Racing Ribbon Delete Kit. That involves removing the intake manifold here, removing the factory ribbon, which is known to turn sideways and cause issues. And then we're going to be reinstalling everything. This is a fairly straightforward process. So the first step is to disconnect everything from the wire harness here. All these clips pay close attention to where they go. You can see that your number one coil is marked with one and they're all kind of in order in the harness here. So we have a couple zip ties. We're gonna go ahead and cut all those zip ties and we're gonna disconnect everything here. To start with, we're gonna disconnect our fuel fitting. That's gonna require us to remove the gas cap to vent any pressure. And you don't want to leave this open like this, just leave it sitting like this while you do this job. All right, so first we're going to remove this fuel fitting right here. It's very easy. What you're going to do is put one finger on either side like this, and you're going to pop this little connector straight up like that. Next, there's this little rubber damper. You're going to go ahead and push it backwards like this. Off of the fuel rail, some fuel might dribble out. That's completely fine. All right, so now we're going to go through and disconnect all of these connectors. So as you disconnect these wires, you can go ahead and move them out of the way. All right, so now I have got all of those disconnected. So now we can go ahead and pull this manifold off. Uh, you're just going to remove these bolts. They are all 12 millimeter. All right, so there are two more bolts. They're at the very bottom of the manifold for that. You're going to want to switch. I was using this shorter extension to get these top ones out. And now you're going to switch to a longer extension. And those are kind of, those are right here. You can reach down and feel them. There's little tangs on the bottom of the manifold. So we're going to go ahead and get those. I think this one was cross-threaded from the factory. It is really freaking tight. Oh, fuck. Well, guys, you see, you always come across something. In this case, this bolt at the bottom of my intake looks like when they put it in from the factory, they cross-threaded it. So it is really difficult to get out. The other side, I got out in two minutes. But this side, of course, the one I decided to show you is... Oh, boy. I don't know, that one was just a bitch. Oh, this should just come right out. Okay. Here we go, I'll try to... So again, no one showed this part on YouTube. I watched a lot of videos, no one actually showed removing the manifold, only they showed it once it was out. All right. Check that out, Makuni. Made in Japan, throttle body. Looks very similar to the Kawasaki and EAC 60 probably. I want you guys to see something on the video here. Look into that throttle body. Look, that's rust. See that? Look at that. My ski hasn't even had its first oil change yet. And there's already rust on the throttle plate here. So that underscores the importance of lubricating this throttle plate as I showed in a previous video. Now, I cannot make this up, guys. Look at this. This is literally, it was a little bit wonky. <laughs> um, yeah, so this exactly is the reason why you need to remove this from the factory. It, uh, it is already basically loose in mine. Again, 
my skis brand new 2025 and uh only taking it out in the ocean like three times so far so i wonder if there's a there's not even a lip holding it on it literally is just sitting in there all right so uh yeah we're gonna get that old ribbon out i guess i didn't even need to buy the ribbon delete kit because it deleted itself all right so my ribbon deleted itself it was Basically, I got the throttle body off and could not believe it, but the ribbon was already sideways here. Really not held in place very well. So, um, anyway, there is a lip here. So you need to get this lip out of the way in order to get that ribbon out. Um, could you just, like, crush it up with a screwdriver and break away this plastic and, you know, get it out without buying the insert kit? You know, of course, sure. But in this case, I'm going to drill out this little lip here and, and put the nice uh, Riva... Uh, billet anodized sleeve in place. Okay, so next up we're gonna get the little template on here and then we're just gonna drill this out. Okay, so I've got this little template uh, installed here. They give you four bolts. I'm only gonna use two. You don't really need all four. And those are six millimeter Allens. So here I've got my drill bit included in the Riva kit. And you're just gonna line this up right like that. And you obviously wanna hold the manifold really well. They advise to put it in a vise. So I have this rag here. You're gonna to wanna to shove this rag all the way in here, okay? All right, so there you go. There's that ring. And then you wanna tilt this over, tap it out, okay? And you wanna pull that rag out slowly like this. All right, so now let's get these two six millimeter Allen's off. I gotta get my ribbon out of there. You guys, it should be easy. This one, I mean, it's freaking. No, it fell down in here. It's just flopping around in there. All right, here it is. All right, there you go. Look at that, that freaking thing. Unbelievable. All right, so we got that terrible ribbon out. Everything everybody says is true, okay? You know, you guys know I like to confirm things for myself. You know, everyone has a different opinion. And I, I appreciate everyone's opinion, but I like to figure things out for myself, right? I like to confirm. This ribbon, when I pulled off my throttle body, was crooked in the intake here. That is very dangerous because as you know, what happens is this little piece here gets sucked into the engine and causes a lot of damage. And I mean, this is just literally, that's how it's held on. Just like that. I mean, comes off extremely easily and it was already crooked in there. So here's that nice Riva collar. You can see it's got four slots here. Those are for the O-rings that are included with the kit. So we're gonna go ahead and put these on. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a little bit of grease to this right here not a whole lot just uh just to help it slide in there so i had my rag stuffed in here to stop any debris from going in i'm gonna go in so i've got the reva sleeve in place here and now we're going to install an o-ring right in the entrance here i'm just going to put a little bit of grease just to keep that o-ring in place all right there we go and now it's time to reinstall our throttle body so it needs to go like this okay so this clip is going to be if you're looking at it it's going to be to your right okay and the motor part this is the internals of the actuator they're going to be facing up like this all right so these bolts are each going to get a little bit of blue loctite all right so then we're going to go ahead and install these bolts here Now we're going to torque them properly. I'm just going to get them started with this, okay? So these are these do need to be torqued. I'm just starting them with the So these are each going to be torqued now to 17.3 foot pounds. Okay. All right. Now this is ready to go back in the ski. So again, don't just tighten these clamps like I see everybody else doing. Make sure they're torqued. These are under pressure. These are boost hoses. So Yamaha says 4.4 foot-pounds. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to reach down in there and we're going to attach that duct down there to the throttle body. All right, so we reached down in there and connected that uh, tube down at the bottom there. Make sure your hose clamp is oriented so you can access it because uh, we will need to do that uh, in a little bit. Also got to get a torque wrench down there, so. All right, perfect. Okay, so now the manifold here, again, never hold it by the fuel rail. Even though that's bolted on, it is still fragile. So you're gonna lift this up here. And it'll slide in place just like that. Make sure there's no wires. Make sure they're all accounted for because you don't want to sandwich them in there by accident. All right, so now we need to reinstall the intake manifold. There's a uh, very specific way to do this with the Torx. And then also, I just want to show you, here's the bolt, and they show you 1322D. So that's not Loctite. That is a thread sealer that they want you to use. So I use this here. This is Permatex Aviation. This is Permatex number two, okay? So there's different thread sealers you could use. And these need to be tightened in two stages. So stage one is 12 foot pounds. Stage two is 23 foot pounds. So first is 12, second is 23. So we're gonna follow these instructions. I'm gonna have this service manual. Again, this is the Yamaha FX service manual. I'm gonna have this open right on the side here just to make sure I show you exactly how to do this by the book. So I'm gonna get these all started loosely. The very first one is this one right here. So again, no Loctite on these. Yamaha wants you to use thread sealant. That's what they specify. So for this, I'm just going to put some right there like that on each of them. So this is bolt number one here. And again, we're not going to tighten these yet. We're just going to get them all loosely started. There's two. Again... Not tightening them. Just want to make sure you know that. Not tightening. Just putting in loosely. Okay. Number three is going to go right down here. Okay. Bolt number three. All right. Bolt number four. Then number five is actually this nut right here. And this one they do not state to put thread sealing on. By the way. Okay, number six is this one right here. Again, the manual does not state to use thread sealant on these acorn nuts. And finally, we have bolt number seven, eight, nine, and 10. So we have right here, this one is seven, this one is eight, and then we have the two very lower bolts right there that you're gonna need to switch to your larger extension to install. You don't want it to come loose. All right, now these lower bolts. All right, now the fun part, we get to torque all of these bolts. So these need to be torqued in two stages, stage one and stage two. Stage one is 12 pounds, stage two is 23 pounds. If you don't do this rightly, the manifold could leak or not be sealed properly. Okay, so first we're gonna set our torque wrench to 12 pounds. Okay, okay, that's four. This nut right here is five, okay, 12. And then six is this one right here. Okay, okay, bolt number eight. And then those two at the very bottom, nine and 10, need to be torqued, but you're gonna have to change to your longer extension because you can't reach them with the short one. All right, so now we have our final bolt. Again, these are the bolts below the intake manifold here. The real pain in the ass ones to get to. Got all those torqued to stage one, so now stage two. Stage two is 23 foot-pounds. All right, here we go from the beginning. Bolt one, 23 foot-pounds. Okay, bolt two, 23 foot-pounds, stage two.
Okay. Bolt three. Okay, bolt four. Okay, bolt five is this acorn not here? Okay, bolt seven, sorry, bolt six is right here. Okay, well, okay, bolt six. All right, bolt number seven. Twenty-three. Bolt number eight. Okay. And then our last two bolts. Oh boy. These bottom bolts are a real pain in the ass. All right. So we followed this procedure and we torqued them all in two stages by the book. All right, so now that everything is back in place and everything is torqued properly, we're now gonna go through and reconnect the wire harness and reconnect the fuel line. All right, so I've got my fuel rail reconnected. I've got all my wire harness back together with new zip ties. And finally, there's one more thing left we have to do. That's uh, that we have to check the torque on this main hose clamp here. So you saw I seated this when I installed it. So we've got to torque both those clamps to 4.4 foot-pounds. Okay, perfect. So once you've confirmed that those two clamps are properly torqued, and you've got your fuel fitting and everything back together, we are now good to go. And uh, what you want to do is you want to connect the ski to the hose, and you want to run it for a couple minutes to make sure that, uh, you know, of course, you've got everything torqued correctly, you've got everything connected correctly, don't wait until you get to the water to test it for the first time. All right, here we go. All right, and that completes our install of the Reva Racing Intake Manifold Upgrade Kit, AKA Ribbon Delete. And uh, again, I highly recommend that you do this to your Yamaha FX uh, or GP SVHO because that ribbon, as you saw from my video, does turn sideways, even on brand new unmodified skis. I'm really disappointed in Yamaha for continuing to install that ribbon like that when they know it's a problem. But thank you to my friends at Reva Racing for setting me up with this intake upgrade kit. Hope this video was helpful. Make sure to check out my other videos on the Yamaha FX SVHO. I install the power filter from Reva. I install this Fizzle BOV kit. Very technical, detailed tutorials. I tell you everything you need to know. So will performing this void your warranty? That is not a question for me. That is a question for your certified Yamaha watercraft dealer or mechanic. Hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more exclusive jet ski content only on JD's Waterworld.